Y'all get ready. Yes, you get Y'all ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your teacups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey, you guys. Good afternoon. I hope everybody's doing good today. So I want to come on here with another podcast. So this is going to be very different from the typical videos that I usually do. And this goes back to two days ago, right before um, Kobe Bryant's death. So if you follow me on Instagram, which unfortunately my page is private because of people trolling and being disrespectful. So it's back private again. Before Kobe Bryant died, I was sent... (laughs) I was sent pictures of um, this new delicacy that's all the rage right now in China, which is called bat soup. And it's been a delicacy for a while now. And so me and one of my subscribers were talking about this and she was like, you got to post this. This is so disgusting. You know, ah, ah, ah. and we all know the Chinese, they eat anything. Not trying to sound racist, but I watch a lot of like, you know, food travel shows and y'all eat anything, honey. Okay. But I try not to judge other cultures, but something about the bat eating just really disgusted me because I feel like these bats, you know, not saying that they're horrible creatures, but they look like little demons. Like they're literally cooked in a broth with the whole face and the face is looking like, what is you doing? Why are you over here trying to eat me? Like it just looks creepy, right? So I posted this on Instagram. We were all talking about it. And I mean, it has like almost 600 comments. So we're all discussing it. And somebody hits me up and they send me a DM and they're like, this is bigger than just this woman eating the bat, you had to get this information out. So now I'm like kind of nervous, like, well, what information? Because I knew a little bit about the coronavirus, but I didn't know all the deets, right? So what it is, is that one of my tea sippers, um, she was living in China, and she wanted to break down the situation to me. And she's saying that basically the mainstream media is trying to minimize this and that this has turned into a, um, a into a pandemic and basically it's a lot more serious than we could ever imagine. So once Kobe died, that took a lot out of me because you guys know I'm an empath. So that took a lot out of me spiritually. It's been a lot of stuff just going through my mind. Yesterday, I was just so depressed. I just wanted to stay in bed. Like, I, you know, sorry to people who were texting me. I just did not really feel like conversating. I think I probably replied back like one thing and I just left you on red. I apologize, but like, My mind is just going through a lot of stuff. And so she hit me up. She's like, I know you're going through a lot with the Kobe thing, but you have to get this information out there. And I initially started working on the video and then I couldn't do it. And now I feel like, okay, let me do this before I have a complete breakdown (laughs) because I had to get this information out there to people. But it also makes me nervous because we have to kind of do this in secrecy because I have to protect this person. So she sent me a lot of video voice chats. That's how I talk to some people via DM. So I asked, I said, do you mind if I use what you're saying in my video, but I'll disguise your voice. I'm an editor. So I can make it where nobody can trace your voice back. And she okayed me to do that. So, um, it, let me just, let me just start. Like, I don't even know where to start with. This is so much information. You guys It's so much information. But basically, they're saying that this this virus started because of the bat eating in Wuhan. And so this has just been a big thing. And they're also saying because they have these wet markets where people go and they buy exotic animals. So in the wet markets, you can eat snakes and koalas and tiger penis and just all types of weird stuff, right, that the Chinese like to eat. Barricaded and guarded by police with masks, Chinese authorities have traced a new deadly virus back to this seafood market in the city of Wuhan. They say a new strain of coronavirus originated here has struck dozens of people and put an entire region on edge. CNN has obtained this video filmed inside the market showing that more than seafood was on offer for sale. Images of the market from early December taken by a concerned customer indicate it was apparently selling other live wild animals, including skinned birds, snakes, and raccoon dogs, sparking concern that the virus might have been transmitted from animals to humans. CNN has not independently verified this footage posted on Chinese social media site Weibo, which has since been deleted by government censors, according to the poster. And because snakes naturally go after bats, they've been contracting the virus. And because these people are eating snakes and bats, now it's being transmitted from animal to human. But the thing about this virus is that now it can be transmitted human to human as well. So I'm going to be playing you guys a lot of clips in this video. I don't know how long this video is going to be. I I just... I have to show you guys the information that's in my DM because it's really bothering my spirit. 
and I don't know who needs to hear this or who's planning on going to China, but it's real out there and they're not giving us the information. And I know I'm mourning, I'm sad behind Kobe's death, but we need to realize that there's some really big things going on in this world as well, besides the death of Kobe Bryant, okay? So I had to snap out of my my little mourning phase and get back to reality. So she started by saying, I'm one of your fans. And what's reported on TV is not the real story about this virus. Here are some conformed reports. I'm not going to post because I don't need to disappear or be blocked from leaving. But still. So this is a really serious situation, you guys, where people are sneaking out information to people like me and others overseas because they're really scared um, because the Chinese government is shutting down anybody that's releasing this information. So she's really putting herself at risk by being willing to share this with me. So she sent me these videos. Now, these videos, they don't have any audio on them, um, but you can see like people just passing out. Then you see somebody in like a quarantine van. They're coming to pick people off the street. Like this is creepy. This looks like a sci-fi movie, but this is not a sci-fi movie, you guys. This is real life. You have people who are literally, well, one minute, there's a man literally standing by a wall and he just falls face first. He just falls face first. And then some people rush out to try and help him. So this is what's happening right now that Nobody is talking about in American media. They're talking about the coronavirus, but they're not talking about, you know, they're not showing these clips. They're like trying to minimize it because, again, China has turned into a superpower. So nobody wants to get on China's bad side. China is taking over Africa. They're all over Nigeria. They're in Ivory Coast, Ghana, like the Chinese are everywhere. You know what I mean? They're turning into a superpower. So it's like a lot of the media outside of China, they're trying to be hush hush about this virus. Okay. Um, she also sent me stuff in Chinese. Thank God she translated it because I don't understand Chinese. So I'm going to read to you guys one of the articles that she sent me in Chinese. And the article translates to this. I am begging everyone to please help the citizens of Wuhan. I'm a nurse. My husband has been infected. What has been reported by the news is completely different than what is really happening. My husband had a fever for eight days without improvement. CT scans is showing a noticeable infection of the lungs. In the past eight days, I've tried every possible connection I have across Wuhan hospital colleagues, but no one will admit but no one will admit my husband. Higher ups informed all doctors to deny acceptance of patients into hospital, denied testing for the virus, denied confirmation of patients whom have been infected, and asked all medical staff to sign non-disclosure agreements. I have suffered massive emotional drain in the past eight days. Hospitals won't admit husband, too afraid to go home, going to hospital to hospital in hopes somebody would admit my husband. No one would admit that he's infected with the virus. I'm almost on the verge of giving up myself. Fear that I won't be able to handle it any longer. Going from hospital to hospital, no open bed, medical staff's overwork, still not enough. Finally was able to get into emergency department. There is no bed, available staff, or beds. Still more patients are being transported in. Sick or not, all congenerated at the same place. Everyone will be infected if this continues. Everyone will die. God, this is just draining to read. So then she sent me another article, and she translated it, of course. And this one says... To all fighting colleagues, the current social order in Wuhan is on the verge of collapsing. Some infected patients have started attacking hospital staff in desperation. If anyone has any way to inform contact higher up, my suggestion is to send in military to maintain hospital and social order. Please help. I will take responsibility for the information I am sharing. So, I mean, these people are in China. They're really scared. Like there's, you know, China, like the Chinese media is very strict. It's not like here where we can just, you know, make up fake news and go on rants and drag people. It's not like that. So these people are risking their lives to get out this information. Like I said, my tea sipper, she's sending me this, but she's very scared. So that's why I was like, I'm going to try to disguise everything as much as I can to protect her. At that point, me and her are talking they're shown videos of people bulldozing infected, I guess, homes and buildings. Um, everybody in China is walking around with a mask. It's really bad, you guys. It's really, really bad. And the thing is, there's been cases now confirmed here in the U.S. So this is not a Chinese problem. 
There's been two cases, I believe, confirmed in like Chicago and one other place. A third case now of the coronavirus has been confirmed here in the United States. Health officials in Orange County, California, say a person there tested positive for coronavirus on Saturday after traveling from Wuhan, China, the epicenter of the outbreak. Meanwhile, the State Department is working to get American personnel stationed in Wuhan on a charter flight back to the U.S., Nearly 2,000 people in China have contracted the virus, which also has killed at least 56 people. The government is racing to evacuate Americans from Wuhan as China sends medical reinforcements to the city where the deadly coronavirus outbreak began. Officials there say the virus is now spreading faster. So far, it's killed at least 81 people in China. More than 2,700 others have been effect infected across 13 countries. Five of those cases are here in the U.S. Remy Innocencio has been covering this story from Beijing after leaving Wuhan last week. Remy, how are people there reacting? Sure. Good morning. Well, China's health minister, Ma Xiaowei, has said that he expects infections to continue to rise. And of course, that has everyone here in the country even more nervous. Now, get this Wuhan and at least 16 other cities with a population of more than 50 million people are still on some kind of transport lockdown. And we spoke to one American stuck in Wuhan, and he says that panic is starting to rise. The biggest problem is I just wish I could get my family off where we need to go to America. American Justin Steese yeah. and his wife Ling have lived together in Wuhan for the past year and a half. Just three weeks ago, Ling gave birth to their baby boy, Colm. My biggest fear is that I would go out, get sick, not knowing it, and then come home and spread it to Ling and the baby. Steese was a soldier in the National Guard for five years, but his wife doesn't have a U.S. visa yet, and he can't leave Wuhan to finish her paperwork. Otherwise, I would have evacuated with the rest of the people and got my wife and kid out of here. He and reportedly 1,000 other Americans are now stranded as the Chinese government works to contain the deadly virus within its borders. But it's quickly worked its way around the world. This case poses no immediate threat to the general public. On Sunday, Los Angeles County officials tried to reassure the public they weren't in danger after two more cases in the U.S. were confirmed, one there and one in Maricopa County in Arizona, all while the number of infections worldwide continues to climb. Back in China, the epidemic has even forced the government to extend the massive Lunar New Year holiday by three days so officials have more time to work and to keep people from contracting and transmitting the virus. At ground zero of the epidemic in Wuhan, excavators are now working around the clock to build two hospitals to treat the infected. And food reserves are being sent in as near empty shelves line supermarkets. But for all the government's efforts, Steve says they're not making anyone feel any better. What the Chinese government is saying, oh, it's calm, resolute. Um, the citizens are actually freaking out a little bit more than normal. What I want to do is go ahead, I'm going to play you guys her voice chats that she sent me with her voice disguised because she's going to break down what she's going through and what she's seen. And then I'm going to play you guys news clips and news articles that I found. And I'm going to show you guys a Chinese teacher who's also risking his life to show people how it is in Wuhan. And my subscriber, like she details it exactly how this dude is showing you guys visually. She says Wuhan is now literally like Shanghai, Wuhan. They're like ghost towns, you know. So let me go ahead and play you guys all this stuff and I'll come back with the rest of my commentary. Hey, good morning, good evening for me. Um, thanks so much for reaching back. Um, I personally am very conscious because I live here about kind of putting out information out into the blogosphere because I know that things are definitely being um, spied upon um, and there are actually laws against people uh, circulating misinformation or as they call it rumors that are not consistently official from the Chinese government. People will be arrested. They have been arrested. Um, this actually, this situation has gone on longer than what's been reported in the media. So I'm going to break this up. Sorry, I'm going to try to break this up and make it short. And you're welcome to ask me any other questions you like. Iris had, was initially saying it was like a pneumonia um, in Wuhan. Um, and because it's Chinese New Year, they let everybody just kind of like leave. And there are 56 cases um, that jumped 
over 24 hours. It was only 25. It's jumped up. We've had three deaths. They have blocked off Wuhan. People cannot leave. Five million people have left, but there are several million that are still there. The Americans are airlifting everybody out. The Australians are getting people out of Wuhan. I think the Indians, I think the South Koreans and the Japanese. This ain't no joke. There have been estimated amounts of up to 90,000 people who have this virus. Wow, that is so scary. Yeah, because like I said, we just started hearing about this maybe like a few days ago. And it's mainly because of those pictures of people eating bats that it's kind of gone viral. So I didn't really know, like, you know, the backstory. But you're saying that you guys were known about this as early as December so it's getting really bad out there. So is it being caused from people just eating all types of weird stuff like bats? Because I am I was watching on Netflix, there's a new show called Pandemic. I haven't watched it all the way through, but they're talking about how the bird flu is coming back. And I remember a few years ago, the bird flu was really bad in China. So I don't, this is some really crazy info, but I definitely understand like, you know, the Chinese government, they like watch everything and stuff like that. But I may have to talk about this, you know, just to try and get the information out there to people and make them aware, you know, of what's going on before they go visit. Well, um, I've been watching you for years um, and I throw my tin hat on every now and again, too. <laughs> I'm very conscious about you know, what I put out into the ether. So with that being said, let me go over a few things that you mentioned. The bat soup incident was from this woman who was like this commentator for the show, and she went to some province or some other location in Asia. So the video was actually two years old. I believe it comes from 2017, well, actually three now. Um, but it resurfaced because of this incident. Now, in this market, this wet market, a wet market basically is where they kind of house a bunch of different things. You can have like a produce wet market and then a wet market where they house, house a lot of produce, I mean, sorry, meats and things like this. But what they were doing, they were selling live animals in there like snakes, koalas. And the reports are that there was issues of cleanliness, which I've lived here in China. They are not the most hygienic people. I'll say that. But... There have also been other conspiracies about the origins of this virus. And one of the things that I do remember hearing back in 2014 is the world's health body, you know, acting a fool like China don't set up this biological test facility where guess where it's located? Wuhan, exactly, where the location of this virus is the epicenter. I'll send you an article. So that's that. As far as the videos and things, my apologies for no audio, but um, it's live. It's live. They've shut down schools. The key, everybody's on spring festival holiday, which is normal, but a lot of cities have slowed down and um, stopped train services. Shanghai is a damn desert there's 30 million people in this city on a regular 15 are gone 15 million are gone it is a damn go it's one of it's one of the largest cities in the world um we've also had cases here some deaths here um so you know to go back to what you were saying it is health hygiene food consumption but also possibility of this this um this bio viral center so i'll drop you some stuff in here i do hope that you'll take the time i know you will to kind of do your facts and go over some stuff i know you'll do that but i definitely think you should put it out because the reality of it is this is much bigger than what is being reported and i watched the world health organization's press conference the other day they acting like the world trade they're trying to concern themselves about the economics and please in china because they coin is so big now when in reality this is something more serious it really is so i'll drop some stuff in here sorry about the lengthy message but i appreciate you reaching back and hopefully you'll take the time and put this out here because it definitely needs to be Okay, so you guys just heard the say, you guys saw the videos, and you guys even heard conspiracy. And for y'all who don't know, in uh, 2017, China established Wuhan National Biosafe Laboratory. And that was to study some of the world's most powerful viruses and pathogens. And at that point, the people were really nervous. You know, I mean, think about it. Think about the city that you live in. I'm in the Twin Cities right now. Think about if you're like in um, L.A. or New York and somebody just decides to just, you know, create a national, you know, laboratory to study some of the most powerful viruses and pathogens, you'd be 
freaked out because it's like, well, you guys, while you guys are studying these, you know, pandemics, what happens if it gets into the air and the people breathe it? So a lot of people are even saying that that might be a conspiracy where they're getting the population sick to study how these different viruses help. Because think about it. With everything that's going on in the world, it's not just about, like, military war and, you know, bombing each other. You know, the new threat is pandemics, is, you know, killing off an entire population with um, bioterrorism. Like, that's a real thing. If you guys don't know, Google research. I know all I do is research shit. So, but Google and research, bioterrorism is really real. So, some of the people in China are nervous and they're feeling like they're being experimented on because this kind of came out of nowhere. Now, granted, the Chinese people eat weird stuff, but we also have to keep in mind that there's this whole biosafety laboratory that was built, you know, about three years ago. Um, And now these people are dropping dead, like literally cases where, like she said, it initially was like 25 people. And within 24 hours, it jumped up to like 50 or so. So it's really scary stuff that's going on. If you've been reading the news, you have been either underinformed or in many cases misinformed about what this virus really is. It's a very serious thing. Now, before I go on, just so you know, I have my PhD from Duke University. It's from the Department of Pathology. My specialty was toxicology. So I've studied all of these things. No, I'm not a practicing doctor right now. But yes, I do understand how these things work. And... Unfortunately, again, the World Health Organization, the CDC, they're very cautious, sort of bureaucratic organizations. This is a fast-moving situation. So I'm here to cut through the noise and give you the information you really need. To get more updates, please come by Peak Prosperity, and you can get a lot of information there. We're updating the site constantly, hourly, about this particular development right now. As well, we have a place for subscribers who want to go in a little deeper and get some good advice on what they can do about this. Now, let's rewind. This is a really fast-breaking development. We only first found out about this particular strain of this coronavirus. And let me break that word down for you. Corona, it means crown. And the reason they call it that is if you looked at one of these virus particles under an electron microscope, it kind of looks, it's all spiky, so it looks like it's wearing a crown. That's the coronavirus. And this one's particularly dangerous because it's only been a month since it's been on our radar screen. It was about mid-December when... China first uh, noticed this coronavirus, very quiet about it. It wasn't until the 31st of December before an official notification went out to the World Health Organization. And gosh, already we're seeing 40 million people now quarantined in their cities in China. It's a really serious thing. Now, why? The first thing you need to understand is this is kind of reads like a, a spy thriller, you know, novel that you might read about a pandemic. Why? Because the things that really confer uh, that dangerousness to a new virus is, one, the human species has not seen it before, so it, our, we haven't had a chance to deal with it. So we don't have this thing called herd immunity. None of us have antibodies to this coronavirus. So when it comes out into a population with no natural immunity, it tends to sweep through very vigorously. The second thing is, this is a cross-species jump. They've already done the DNA sequencing on it and discovered this is a bat virus that went through a snake picks up some snake virus bits, and now it's crossed into humans. That makes it especially dangerous for a pandemic. Then you need two other factors in there. One is called the transmissivity. It's a R naught or an R zero. It's asking the question, how easy does this jump between people? So if I had it and I walked into a room of 10 people, how many people on average would get that? If you have a R naught greater than one, meaning I have a chance on average of walking into a room full of 10 and one other person catches it, that's enough to sustain transmission. An R0 of less than one, this thing will die out on its own over time. But anything over one is a concern. It's thought that this has an R0 of somewhere between 1.5 and 2.4. So this really has a chance to spread and spread uh, pretty strongly. The second big thing we need to know is that this is pretty lethal. The people who've described what is happening, a healthy 23-year-old read this full account about what his experience was just got laid low. Like imagine the worst flu you've had times two, really touch and go with strong medical support. This person pulled through, but we're finding that people who are a little bit older and the very young, of course, as usual, are prone to really having catastrophic outcome. This thing has a case fatality rate of around 3%, but we won't know how high it is until all is said and done. I think it looks like early data, it's coming in a little higher than 3%. If it came in at 3% and it came to America, and it was as uh, transmissive as the Spanish flu was in 1919, that would translate into about 16 million people becoming critically ill. And 
another two to three million people succumbing to this. It's a very dangerous virus, which is why we get to the thing that really annoys me about this is that it has a really long latency period, meaning if, if you infected me, I would go about five days before I would begin to express any symptoms. It would be another maybe four days before those symptoms were bad enough for me to go, geez, maybe I should go see a doctor. So there's somewhere between a nine and a 14 day window before somebody who, who got, gets this virus would actually present to the medical establishment. During this whole time, they are infective and uh, infecting other people around them. So here's why I get annoyed by this. The doctors know this, the World Health Organization knows this, certainly all the people at the CDC know this, all of the health specialists in the UK know this, in Europe, in Finland, anywhere you want, Asia, Singapore, Japan, they all know this. Now, what would you do if you knew that there were tens of thousands of people infected with this thing who were living in a place and you were gonna have them maybe traveling, getting on little metal tubes, getting in airplanes and traveling to your country? Well, knowing that this has an incubation period where you can't detect any symptoms, I think the responsible thing would be to say no travel, but that's too hard because that would cost a lot of money. So we're not gonna do that. But then maybe there would at least be a quarantine period all you've been reading about is that the security precautions are what they're doing is taking the temperatures of people as they deplane from ground zero, where this virus is known to be uh, endemic and epidemic right now. They're taking the temperature readings by pointing a little something at people's foreheads, and if you don't have a fever, come on in. Completely ineffective. And they know that, but that's not what's being said. Uh, they are telling you that you are being protected by screening measures at the airport. So you need to understand that. And the other thing is that they've talked about the World Health Organization on the 23rd of January, that's yesterday at the time of this filming, declined to declare this a public health emergency. They said it doesn't quite fit our, doesn't fit all the criteria yet, but oh my gosh, they must've got lawyers on there instead of doctors. Because what they said was to, to classify this as a public health emergency, they need to have somebody outside of China who's got the disease spreading it. And all they had for sure was people with the disease who'd come from China and they didn't have any technical examples of, of cross uh, contamination once they were outside. So they said, technically, it's not a pandemic. So I have to read to you where we are on the WHO, WHO World Health Organization pandemic checklist. Dan, bring this up, because look at this, phase one, if you're in phase one, no animal influenza virus circulating among animals has been reported to cause infection in humans. Er, cross that one out. Phase two, an animal influenza virus circulating in domesticated or wild animals is known to have caused infection in humans and is therefore considered a specific potential pandemic threat. Oops, cross that one out. We're way past that one. How about phase three? Have we made it to phase three? That's where an animal or human animal influenza reassortant virus and that's what we have here, remember? Bat, snake, human. Has caused sporadic cases or small clusters of disease in people, but has not resulted in human to human transmission sufficient to sustain community level outbreaks. Cross er, that one off because we're way past phase three. We're here at phase four on this pandemic checklist where human to human transmission of an animal or human animal influenza reassortant virus able to sustain community level outbreaks has been verified. I also want to point this out. I also believe why a lot of this stuff is spreading. Um, we talked about this a while ago on one of my live streams, the rise of, you know, the whole mukbang culture. And the mukbang culture started in Asian culture where you would see these videos, of these tiny little Asian women and just eating like, you know, gobs of noodles and food. And just, you know, to me, it's always promoted gluttony. And I believe because these mukbangs have now gotten so popular on social media, because it's not just Asians, before it was an Asian thing, but now you have black people doing mukbangs, white people doing mukbangs, all races. But after now that the mukbang community is very saturated, you can only watch people eat fried chicken and, you know, devour crab legs and shrimp and McDonald's for so long. So then what ended up happening is that people have started taking mukbangs crazier and crazier. Like I seen a woman eat like a giant squid one time on Facebook that came out the ocean. It was the nastiest shit I've ever seen. Like she literally ate it raw. It was bigger than her head. I'm like, what the fuck is this? Like everything's not meant for the human body to consume. And I believe that's when the bat thing started getting really popular because um, the girl Wang Meng Nguyen, 
I don't know if I pronounced her name right. But she is a popular Chinese celebrity and she does mukbangs. And she's had to come out recently and apologize. She's like literally begging China for forgiveness right now because people are blaming her. They're saying because you sat here, you basically grabbed a bat. She ripped it apart on video. She ripped it apart on video and started devouring the bat. And so people are blaming her for the rise of people wanting to eat bats in China and people getting sick. So now she's begging the Chinese people to forgive her. And this video is old. It's from a few years ago. But just because it's from a few years ago, people started emulating her. And like I said, that's one thing I've noticed with a lot of these mukbangs. They've gotten crazier and crazier with some of the things that they're eating and some of the things that they're trying. You know, so I... Being a slight conspiracy theorist, my tin hat really tingles. You know, to have this girl, you know, three years ago doing this bat challenge, and that's when mukbangs were getting really popular and picking up steam, and now you see people mukbanging all the time. You know, now it's like a part of, you know, I don't know, culture, whatever. I feel like that kind of ties into all this stuff. These people being conditioned to eat all this weird shit for views and clicks. And now these same people now, fast forward three years, are getting sick. A deadly new virus which has killed 25 people in China could have spread to humans from bat soup, it's been claimed. Bat soup is reported to be an unusual but popular dish particularly in Wuhan, where the virus is understood to have originated at an open-air fish market. The outbreak of coronavirus began in the city of Wuhan, which has since been put in lockdown after more than 600 people were infected globally. Recently, photos of Wuhan locals eating bat soup have surfaced causing some to believe that this was the cause of the new coronavirus outbreak. Bats, like many wild animals, could potentially host bacteria and viruses. In addition, the virus was first detected in a food market in Wuhan. Experts published a paper to the China Science Bulletin that suggested bats could host the virus. However, this was all still under speculation. It's not clear yet how the virus was spread to humans but scientists believes there was an unknown intermediate. This caused some to speculate that the bat soup might have been the missing link. Footage of Wuhan resident eating bad soup went viral on social media earlier this week. In the video, you could see a girl eating a black bat with a pair of chopsticks. As per the article, scientists released a statement released to the South China Morning Post that said, the Wuhan coronavirus natural host could be bats, but between bats and humans, there may be an unknown intermediate. The virus outbreak in China had caused the government to order Wuhan to shut down all outbound public transportation in Wuhan. In addition, residents were urged not to leave the city unless absolutely necessary. Hi, how are you? My name is Ben Kavanagh. I live in Wuhan, and today I'm going to go to the shop. One mask, another mask. Apparently this mask actually doesn't do much, but two masks is always better than one. Can't forget the most important thing, and the silliest thing. Got a big backpack, got a big suitcase. Uh. Got my gloves, I'll wash these when I get home, just to be safe from all the stuff I'll touch on my way. Oh, it's pretty hot, pretty warm. I don't expect to run into anyone today. I'm not gonna touch them with my hand, I'm just gonna knee it. It's open. Another beautiful day in quarantine, Wuhan. This is a city with a population bigger than London. This is usually a very busy street. All of these shops would be open. Lots of noise. Surrounded by apartments. And yet, there's no one on the street. It's so quiet. This intersection is usually one of the busiest intersections. That's why it's got the walkway above it. And as you can see, there's, I mean, there's a couple cars. But other than that, fairly empty. There is my friend. We are going to the shop. 
with don't need to look left and right there's no cars hello hello how are you i'm well are you well i'm well got your suitcase got my suitcase it's very large let's go this is shangang lu hong kong road usually a very very busy road but obviously not today not for the foreseeable future great to bike though the whole situation is just really really scary you guys be careful if you are going to asia you guys saw how that gentleman has to dress just to leave the house and who's to say he doesn't already have the virus you know, who knows? But literally, Wuhan is a ghost town right now. And that is, from what she told me, that is one of the most popular cities in China. So that'd be like New York City right now having a fraction of its population. You'd be shook. Like, where the hell is everybody? You know, so it's really scary. It's bigger than what's being said in the media. Um, I just... I know this is not my normal style videos. I know we like to sip tea and talk about celebrity gossip, but every now and then I will break from that to talk about real issues that are affecting people that I care about. And I care about my subscribers and I want to put the information out there. Hopefully YouTube won't pull this video down. You know, they hate anytime I speak the truth, my shit gets blocked and whatever else. But I will also put this on my podcast. So if they end up pulling this down, just go to my podcast and you guys can download it and listen to it on there. But this is very scary, you guys. Bioterrorism is very real, you guys. And something about this entire situation is not sitting well with my spirit. And especially being that the day before or even a few hours before, the media was just starting to talk about the virus and then Kobe dies. And now the world is distracted by the death of Kobe Bryant and everybody's forgetting that this virus is still raging on and people are dying every day and it's getting worse. And this virus could be traveling and we might see more and more cases coming to the U S because a lot of people are traveling now international. So be very, very careful. If you have to go to China, um, you may want to delay Going to China, I know some of y'all said that y'all don't want to eat Chinese food right now. Do what you got to do, but, you know, and also just be careful eating some of this, these exotic creatures. They're not meant to be consumed. There are certain things and certain viruses that can live in the belly of the bat, that can live in the belly of the snake. It doesn't get them sick because, you know, they're cold-blooded creatures, I believe. Bats are too. Maybe I'm wrong. But they're animals, regardless. There's certain things that animals can have in their system and they'll be okay, that humans, once it comes into our system, it's not okay. So be very mindful, especially people who are mukbanging, all this weird shit. Be very, very careful because you don't know where these bats are coming from. You don't know where they're being harvested. You don't know where these snakes are coming from. So it's a really scary thing, you know. But um, thank you so much to my subscriber who reached out to me. I'm always shocked <laughs> to know that I had people who watch me all over the world, you know, and that that is such a blessing because I would have never thought that little old me would, you know, be able to um, have subscribers in, you know, different parts of the world like China, Japan, you know, Australia. Like people are starting to know me globally and that is a blessing and that is something I don't take for granted and that is something that's very humbling. So thank you for having the strength to share your story with me and staying on top of me to make this video because it's been a rough, you know, 48 hours. But um, I had to put this out there. I hope you guys learned something from it. I'm sorry if this video ends up being like 40 minutes long, but I had to put the information out there. And um, please spread the word and stay woke, stay vigilant, um, stay up to date. You know, let's mourn Kobe, but let's also not forget that there's real things going on right now in this day and age that's affecting all of us. You know, and I don't want to sound cliche, but this is one big circle of life. Like we're all connected, race, gender, sexuality aside. At the end of the day, at the bottom of everything and the grand scheme of things, we're all human. And this is something that can affect you no matter your race, gender, any of that stuff. So anyways, y'all, I'm about to go ahead and log off. Let's get the discussion popping. Leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on everything concerning the coronavirus, the bad eating, the rise of mukbangs, um, the bio lab that they built in 2017, and the things that my subscriber was sharing with all of us. So thank you guys for listening. Bye.